You're still watching our eyes. KPMG budget today, 2024. I am boasting number five. Now, let's keep the conversation going and try to put some food on your table. We're discussing agriculture and food security. 200 million mouths to feed every day, 365 days a year. In other words, if you have a square meal, three square meal, we need to make at least 600 million meals every day. And that's a whole lot of work. The country has a budget for agriculture this year, 362 billion naira. Would that be enough for all of us and the new ones we're breeding? Now, let me bring into the conversation Ndidi Ounelli Okonkwo, who is on the board of several board companies in Nigeria. Of course, we talk about companies within the food and agriculture chain. She is also the co founder and the chairperson of the this organization that has a whole lot in agriculture and nutrition. Thank you so much for coming, Sahel Consulting. It's good to have you once again. It's good to have this conversation with you once again. And you're so passionate about food and agriculture. And I'm enthused by your zeal for how to see how, on how Nigeria can go on a food sustainability. So, well, 362 billion Naira in, in, in budget allocation this year for, for food. And, and do you think we should ask the Honorable Minister who's in charge of budget and um, economic planning that is here if you need if we need more money and he could just approve it for us he's just sitting here in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not enough for you well i i have to say that it's a very small amount relative to the issues that we face in the country and it's not about food security alone it's about nutrition security because food is medicine so when we talk about the food ecosystem it touches the ministry of health the ministry of trade and investments the ministry of youth development, education, Water it's cost-cutting. Mm. And Nigeria committed to the Malawi Board Declaration in 2014, which is a commitment of 10% of resources to agriculture and food systems. Our current budget is 1.2%. And with the food insecurity facing our nation and the 30, over 30% 30 food inflation in the country, the average Nigerian cannot afford a healthy meal. The last statistic actually showed that only 84% of our population cannot afford a healthy meal. So the average Nigerian is struggling, is hungry, hungry and angry. And when you have that in a population, it affects productivity levels, education output, human capacity, and obviously all our prospects for growth are limited if we do not nourish our people. So from where I'm sitting, the amount we have allocated is too little to get the work done. And unfortunately, we're still looking at this food ecosystem in silos as opposed to looking at it holistically to drive economic growth. Interesting. Do you think we can use what we have to get what we want? 362 billion naira. And then, as I said earlier, we're going to ask the minister to tell Mr. President to give us additional uh, 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 fund moving forward. But again, how do we use what we have in the current year budget, fiscal appropriations, to improve on critical areas that we need to develop? About 102 billion naira of this goes to National Agriculture uh, Development Fund, which is also help us to develop the various areas of agriculture sector, the entire value chain, infrastructure, you need investment in, in storage, productivity, distribution network, the entire, the whole nine years in the manner of speaking. Do you think we can make something good out of what we have? Well, given the limited funds, we're going to have to prioritize. Good. And I would say that historically, we've not done a great job of prioritizing which value chains are most important. Now, I would say there are six value chains. Maize, soya, because of poultry and animal feed, cassava, yam and rice, and then dairy, poultry, and tomatoes. We have to remove the bottlenecks in these value chains. We have to triple productivity. We have to reduce post-harvest losses. And we have to enable the private sector working in these sectors to thrive. And that means that we're going to have to cut out a lot of the waste in our ecosystem. And we're also going to have to remove a lot of the bottlenecks around how we deploy resources. We're going to need the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank to hold financial institutions accountable to give financing to the private sector working in agriculture. We're going to have to create incentives for new investments in that sector. We're going to have to address the insecurity in our ag sector so that our farmers are safe and they can work. So I would like to suggest really a presidential ecosystem task force. And I think the other uh, question was posed to the minister, how do we have a seamless 
commitment to this sector, where we have ministers in charge of all the key components of the ecosystem held accountable to deliver for Nigerians so that we can actually have food on our table that's affordable, available, accessible, and healthy. Interesting. Uh, in terms of, um, uh, if, you, if you look at exchange rates, for example, uh, and, and what we would try to budget for for uh, our agriculture sector this year, and, and then you look at how affordable food prices will be when you look at exchange rates uh, keep moving around, and then we're trying to hold it down somewhat in the manner of speaking without offending the market, uh, uh, allow the market forces to work. So 800. Uh, uh, a narrow to, to, to the dollar. How do you think we can uh, um, impact agriculture this year with the kind of exchange rate volatility that we have on our hand at the moment? Well, the first step is ensure food self-sufficiency. Nigeria can feed Nigeria, but we need to grow our output. We have to reduce post-harvest losses. Now, for the value chains I've mentioned, we're naturally endowed to grow them, and we can. So if we become food self-sufficient, we're not going to be dependent on imports, right? Instead, we can actually export ginger, sesame, the products that we don't need to eat on a daily basis. And so I think the prioritization has to be clear. Food self-sufficiency and then export-led growth. The, how exchange rate affects the agriculture sector now is that food is so cheap in Nigeria for the external world that we see truckloads of Chinese, Traders, traders from Niger coming to our farms and buying and taking it out of the country because to them, it's cheap. To us, it's expensive. And so what we have to do is protect our economy, protect some of our borders so that if there's going to be exports, it's through formal channels so that we can get the returns and the forex. Yeah. But when we continue to see the porous borders that foster illegal trade of our food products, we see this in sesame, in millets, uh, ginger, and uh, sorghum, and this is really heating up the market. So already, prices have tripled when we should be seeing low prices because of recent harvest. So on, we have so much work to do from a policy perspective to enable the food ecosystem to thrive. But this is one sector we're naturally endowed for, and there's no reason why Nigeria is not feeding itself and feeding the rest of Africa. So, the, 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 uh, and I'm going to go back to that figure, 857 billion is what is on the table for food and, and security put, put together. And but, so you see food security as a national security issue? It is definitely a national security issue. And unfortunately, we haven't seen the seamless collaboration between our national security agencies and our ag investment. There are a few steps we need to take. One, every single security agency need an, needs an agriculture desk. At the recent Sahel Food Change Makers Conference where the Honorable Minister joined us, we talked about the need to have agri desks at every single security agency. And every single agri agency needs to have a security desk. We need our security organizations and apparatus in our country working with our farmer organizations for intelligence. We need to actually invest to enable these farmer organizations to police their own communities. There's so much investment we need to make to address the insecurity challenges in our country. And if we don't address them, coupled with climate change, we'll continue to struggle in this and, sector. And I was about to ask that if we're putting enough cash on the table for, for, for climate change and climate adaptation uh, uh, issues that we have to deal with. Again, when you look at across Africa last year and, and years before, you've seen a whole lot more. In Nigeria, for example, flooding that we saw in 2012, we saw this in 2022, uh, 23 as well. A again, this will have major impact, breaking down roads, washing away thousands of hectares of farmlands and running businesses businesses and farmers into losses. Some of them are yet to recover. And some of government interventions going down the drain because of climate issues. So how much more of what we have on the table do you think we can do? Can we source external uh, uh, support to, to support our farmers and support the various uh, uh, state governments and other private sector institutions to mitigate this climate adaptation? We need insurance in that sector as well. Definitely. You've laid it out. We have great research institutions that are indigenous in Nigeria producing drought resistant seed fault resistant seeds, productivity improvements, and unfortunately they're not getting into the hands of the farmers. And that's because of our weak extension systems. So we really need to enable our extension workers to have the technology to teach farmers how to adapt and mitigate given the climate realities. We also need to empower states. At the end of the day, agriculture is deployed at the state level. And our states are not ready for the droughts, the floods, 
and they have not put in place systems and structures to preempt some of the damages you mean that the we have. the various Ministry of Agriculture at the state at level the state and, national and really level. enabling the government. Now, there's so much climate financing in the global arena. How are we positioning Nigeria to receive that climate financing and enabling our private sector institutions to take advantage of the climate financing and allocating it to local organizations? Finally, we really need to have a more cohesive look at what it will take to reduce post-harvest losses. Because climate change, the heating up of our economy, not just droughts and floods, but increased heat, where there's no storage, no cold chain, our markets are still a cake, we're still using raffia baskets in the 21st century. So 40 to 60% of our fruits and vegetables go to waste, 20 to 30% of our grains. Unless we invest in new technology, primary processing, Processing at the farm gate, but processing in our food companies, we're going to see hunger persist in the land. When we discuss agriculture and food security, um, uh, Didi, do you think we need to move very rapidly to agro allied part of this conversation, in which some step from some some steps being taken, some support that Nigeria is getting, for example, from the AFDB group, the African Development Bank, uh, doing about uh, about 22 states for special economic processing zones. Do you think that is one help that we need to 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 work on very? quickly to ensure that we can move on, reduce post-harvest harvest losses, and get to do more cottage industries along the corridor of our agri chain. Definitely, and that's why we need an enabling environment for private sectors to thrive. Most food companies in Nigeria are on their knees. Because of the power issues we've discussed, the security issues, the purchasing power challenges, most of the companies we work with through African Food Change Makers and Sahel Consulting are considering closing down. And that's not what we need right now. We need Nigerian companies thriving and actually filling the gaps that the imp high expensive imports have created. So we need an enabling policy environment. Financing, we need to remove the bottlenecks. I know we talk about tax regimes, but we need to have tax incentives for people to invest in agro-processing in this country, and we need to have technology transfer. Unfortunately, we have done very little processing in Nigeria. Most of our companies import pre-processed products and repackage them. But we need to give incentives to companies that are sourcing from our farmers, processing for the Nigerian market, and producing nutritious food that's affordable. Small what and medium enterprises exactly. companies. Small and medium-sized enterprises need to be at the forefront mm. of our development agenda. And I haven't seen that type of commitment yet. And I would really like to encourage this current administration to put its money where its mouth is and invest in local food processing for Nigeria and eventually for the world. Uh, interesting. Um, I wish I could just give you a handshake. But well, it's just a little bit of a divide here. Ndidi, thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, uh, we appreciate that from, from Sahel uh, uh, Agriculture and Nutrition. Thank you so much. And your passion for food, food nutrition and agriculture in Nigeria, we're on board quite a lot from what you discussed with us here at the RISE KPMG budget today. Thank you so much. And thank do you so enjoy much. the rest of thank the year.